Hello and welcome back to my wound care at home series. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be going over how to take care of your swollen legs. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel grow. So let's get started. So possible causes of swollen legs. So there is many reasons why you could have a swollen leg, um, like injury, so a sprained ankle, heart problems, kidney problems, deep skin infections like cellulitis, um, chronic edema, lymphedema, and venous disease. So this video is going to be focused on venous disease and how to prevent venous leg ulcers, okay? So venous disease is the inability of veins um, to move the blood back up to your heart. So this causes leg swelling. Poor venous return can lead to or put you at risk for skin damage and cause venous leg ulcers. So venous leg ulcers are often very slow to heal or they may not heal at all without the help of a healthcare professional. So if you've been told by a healthcare professional that your swelling in legs are due to poor venous function, this resource can help you care for your legs and prevent ulcers from occurring. Now I want to put a big caution here. If you have not had a diagnosis of venous leg edema, and you have swelling in your legs, you are urged to contact your healthcare professional right away to rule out other causes. Do not use the information in this resources as it could be harmful to other conditions other than venous disease, okay? So what causes venous leg edema? So venous disease, which affects about 30% of the population, is the most common cause of leg edema or swelling. Um, venous leg edema occurs when the valves in the veins of the legs are damaged or the muscles in the lower legs are weakened and your blood is not properly pumped to your heart, okay? So I do have a picture here on the side this is your normal veins so see how they close so with muscle contraction it lets the blood flow through and close flow through and close so they're valves so the blood doesn't come back down now when we have um venous disease these stay open okay so they just kind of stay open so the blood can flow back down okay um, so when this happens, blood pools in your veins in the lower part of your leg and the fluid part of the blood leaks into the tissue. This fluid buildup is what causes the leg swelling. So leg edema weakens the skin in the area, making it more likely to be caused, uh, to cause damage by just minor trauma. So just nicking your leg off of the coffee table. Um, this can turn into a big ulcer when you have edema, okay? In some cases, the skin breakdown happens without any trauma because the damage is being done to the tissue from the inside of the leg just by the swelling. Now, there is different grades of swelling, which I'm not going to get into, but sometimes legs get huge with this edema and they're very stretched, very shiny. Um, the skin is just pulled so, so tight. This is extreme cases which should have been caught well before this. Um, but when they get that large, they just start opening up to get that fluid out, path of least resistance. Um, so the fluid does come through the skin and causes these venous leg ulcers. So what can lead to venous leg edema? So the following are known risk factors for venous leg edema. This means that if you have any of the conditions listed below, you may be at higher risk for venous leg edema. So the risk factors. Um, diseases such as arthritis or injury, such as a bone fracture, sprain to your ankle or foot can be painful. So sometimes you start walking in a way that it doesn't hurt as much, but it takes away from your normal full stride. You may end up taking shorter shuffled steps. And why is this important? 
because a normal stride helps the muscle in your lower leg pump the fluid back up to your heart. If you're not walking properly, the blood pools in the lower leg. And over time, if your walk is not corrected, you may be at risk for venous leg edema. Sitting or standing too long can also cause damage to your valves and cause your legs and ankles to swell. This can happen during a single plane ride or car ride or even in the workplace over time if you're sitting in one spot day after day um, for many hours. That's why we need to get up and move around, stretch. Um, it's very, very important. Um, in obesity can also increase pressure on the valves in the veins and cause damage to them and result in leg edema. Multiple pregnancies can add pressure to the valves in the veins and increase risk of venous disease. Um, blood clots in the veins in the past may have caused damage. Um, and if there is swelling that suddenly occurs in one leg and it becomes painful, it may be a new blood clot. And this is a serious condition that does require medical help. So what does venous leg edema look and feel like? Okay, so your legs may have very little swelling or even look normal in the morning when you wake up but the swelling gets worse as the day goes on. This is because when you're laying flat down, the water equalizes throughout your body. But as you put your feet in a dependent position, that's when the fluid starts pooling once again, okay? You can um, possibly have veins that are easily seen through your skin. So spider veins are really small. Uh, varicose veins are larger and sometimes protrude out through the skin. Um, you may have pitting edema. I do have a picture here of pitting edema. Now this is when you press firmly on the skin and release and you have an indent or a, a pit in the skin, okay? Um, you may also have itchy, dry skin. They may feel heavy, achy, or stiff, but feel better when you lay down on a sofa bed and lift them above your heart. That's because the fluid is then pulled towards your heart. And you may also have this darker color than usual as seen right here. So it's almost a like a brown staining of the lower leg. Um, and these are all things that indicate venous leg disease. Next, we are going to talk about cellulitis. So what is cellulitis? It's a skin infection that occurs from swollen legs. So it happens when bacteria or fungus get into the skin caused by either scratching, itchy legs, cracks. Um, some, sometimes we get little micro openings and that fluid will come out of when our legs get very large. So if that bacteria gets in there, um, it can cause cellulitis. So it's an infection in your legs. They become red, warm compared to the other leg. You can see here in the picture, this is the leg with cellulitis. This is the normal leg. So it just becomes very inflamed. Definitely need antibiotics for this. A lot of times it's IV antibiotics. <laughs> So what can be done about venous leg edema and how can we prevent uh, venous leg ulcers from really starting? So once we notice that legs are starting to swell, that's when we want to start treating. And how we treat is with compression therapy. So it's an effective way to manage swelling and venous leg edema, but it must be recommended by a healthcare professional and only after a complete examination to rule out other causes has been done, can we wear compression? Because it can be really dangerous to wear compression therapy in individuals with other health problems. Now, there are two types of compression therapy um, that they may suggest. One is compression wraps and one is pumps. So um, the compression wrap it's a, com it's a prescribed compression stocking. You wear them every day from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. You take them off for bedtime, okay? But you put them on right in the morning when you get up. 
or shower right away and put them on um, just because that's when your legs are the skinniest and if we put the compressions on right away the fluid will stay out of the legs and it won't get as swollen okay um, you may prefer um, to wear open-toed compression stockings there's many different types of stockings you can get um, and that just it helps prevent the toes from sweating um, or if you're prone to athletes foot it, it's just a preference thing um, when you go to get fitted for the compressions and that's another thing you have to be fitted for these compressions so the doctor will order the correct um, pressure size and then you need to be fitted for them you can't just go online and get these because they need to measure your leg properly um, so that you have the proper effect you don't want them too tight you don't want them too loose you want that proper effect so your leg does need to be measured so I did just want to put a big caution here because even if a doctor has prescribed and done the proper test sometimes there still can be complications so if you notice your to, your toes become blue pale or more swollen than usual or you develop a new pain in your feet or legs or if you have a sudden shortness of breath immediately discontinue the, th the therapy so whether it be the wraps the pumps the stockings it doesn't matter you want to stop um, and call your healthcare professional. Pale or blue skin can result uh, be a result of not enough oxygen getting to that area. Um, so there, there could be other things going on that weren't caught initially. So you want to make sure if you notice anything out of the ordinary to take those off and get a hold of your healthcare practitioner. So what can we do every day? So there are many things that we can do to reduce venous leg swelling or edema um, and lower the risk of developing a venous leg ulcer. So following the steps below every day can um, keep your legs healthy and protected. So what we're going to do is wash our legs and feet daily. The best time to do this is at nighttime when we're taking off our compression stockings. Um, or when our compression wrap is changed. So if it is wrapped and you're having a healthcare professional do this, sometimes it's only done every three to even up to a week. Um, so we'd wanna make sure that the legs are cared for when the compression wrap's taken off. Um, you wanna look at the lower legs daily or when the wrap is changed, check for any new areas, color changes, swelling, rashes, cuts, open sores. We want to moisturize the feet and the legs daily or after washing and, ex and inspecting. Use a mild, unscented moisturizer. Protect your skin from injury by wearing protective clothing such as long pants, long socks, well-fitted non-skid shoes. Apply sunscreen, insect repellent when outside. Avoid scratching or rubbing your leg. Even when they feel itchy, sometimes you just need to add a little moisturizer to them and it'll prevent them from itching. You want to raise your legs um, a few times a day above your heart and sleep with a pillow underneath your legs. This will help bring the fluid back to your heart. Um, you would like um, we would like you to exercise and strengthen your leg muscles daily using um, a resistance band. So um, <clears throat> say this is your foot, you would come down and up. That pumping motion of almost like you're walking. And if you have a resistance band and you're holding a resistance band on here, um, it helps it. It helps it even more because you're using resistance. You're getting those muscles working even harder. Okay. You want to avoid um, crossing your legs because crossing your legs does interfere with blood flow. Um, avoid wearing shoes or boots with a high heel. Um, and you want to move around as much as possible. Get those muscles in your legs moving. Go for walks often. Um, and if you are overweight, we want to reduce the weight um, because that will decrease the pressure on your lower legs. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you did find it helpful. And if you haven't done so already, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. And I will catch you all in my next video. See you guys.